So Houston, let's talk about Houston. Put it on. You come to Houston, you know, we got the whole story on the last interview so they can refer back. But you came to Houston, young, you know what I'm saying? You got locked up mm -hmm. and you're like, you know what I'm saying, early adulthood. You did five yeah, years. Yeah. 18, I went to prison. For sure. Mm -hmm. In Texas. Mm -hmm. um, just, just explain, before we explain a little bit about the incarceration, just explain some of the opportunities that you came into when, when it's coming into Texas. You know what I'm saying? Opportunities as far as what? Uh, anything. Like, the, basically, let's explain some of the things that led you into, into doing videography, even though you're originally a rapper. Oh man, honestly, what made me get into videography, just to be totally honest with you, first of all, is when I was in prison, I didn't think about shooting videos in prison. I want to be clear about that. It wasn't okay. that, but I definitely started looking at music outside of just rapping because I learned that music was a business by reading this book by Donald Passman. All you need to know about the music business in prison. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that I was locked up with. Turn me on to this book. All you need to know about the music business by Donald Passman. He got several different editions of it. And when I read the book, it made me understand that music was a business. Like a lot of people that's rapping, especially if you're young, you're a kid from the hood, you don't know nothing about no business of no sort. You just feel like, oh, I got talent. One day I'm going to make it and I'm going to take care of my family. I'm going to get millions of dollars. And so essentially that's a fairy tale if you believe that your talent, just because you're talented and you know how to put words together, that one day a million dollars is going to fall out the sky. It's not true. It's a business. And so I was already thinking like, I have to do something outside of rap because rap, it's about rap, not music. Rap is, 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 is a small thing in the bigger scale of things. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's a certain age group of people that listen to it. You're not going to be 70 years old, right. you know, banging the latest hot artists. You know what I'm saying? Even though it's going to be the music business still going to be going. I'm saying rap is, is a little small. And so that's when reading that book put my mind into the mind frame of business. You got to become a necessity. You got to become what do people need? Motherfuckers don't listen to rap all day. It's motherfuckers that don't listen to rap. And right now, me personally, I don't listen to rap all the time. You know what I'm saying? And so I just knew that what I stand for in the world, I want it to be way bigger than some limited thing. You know what I mean? And so I was like, okay. So when I came home, one thing for sure, man, if you really seriously, sincerely want something, it's going to become your reality if you literally stay on that path. I knew I always wanted to be in the music business, period. And so when I came home, man, uh, somebody that I knew was shooting videos, I was I was trying to get a video shot for me. He said he was going to charge me a certain amount that I didn't ha even have. I didn't respect. I thought we was on a personal level, I assume, which was my problem that, oh, he was going to look out for me. He didn't look out. I couldn't afford it. And I picked up a camera and started doing it for myself. You know what I'm saying? And then... You know, like I said, I started doing for other people that I was cool with, Party Boy Pig, Ski Taste, all these people that y'all was seeing at the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Right, and, right. you know, I just kept it going. I never stopped doing it. But uh, me being in prison, honestly, is what put my mind frame in the, it is into the business, man, that I'm, I'm steady growing into. For sure. And then it, it, it built you into having the largest hip hop video platform in Houston. Yeah. yeah, shout out to shout out to the uh, the, the prison, the, the prison system. I got, that a, shit I got definitely turned me into some. I got a question mm -hmm. for you, man. I want to know, you know, what I'm saying a lot of times, especially with hip hop, mm -hmm. but not even just hip hop. The the pivotal story for a lot of black males, male spirit is is prison. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying. How do you think? Prison affects an artist's craft, just from an artistry standpoint. Not the social, political, economic prison, you're mm -hmm. a criminal. But how does prison affect an artist's craft? Honestly, it depends on your personal experience and why you locked up. Everybody's experience is different locked up. So you have to always know like how much time somebody did and what was they doing, where they was at, and where was they. Because it's different type of prison yards, you know what I'm saying? You got places where, you know, people hustling, getting it in, getting money, fighting, murdering, messing with guards, hustling, doing the whole night. Then you got real quiet facilities where nothing's going on, you know what I'm saying? You got racial units. So it really just depends on where you at, I think, in your experience. I think the more you see in that experience, 
then you're going to have more to talk about and it's going to affect your craft in a, in a positive way because one thing about the world, the world love drama. That's why you see gossip is the biggest shit. That's why you see a lot of blog pages. I'm, I'm not hating on blogs. A blog job is to report shit that motherfuckers be entertaining. <laughs> For the real. world entertains bullshit. For real though. So the more bullshit you see in prison, the more you're going to have to draw from more experience. You're going to have more to talk about for sure. You know what yeah. I mean? And the type of person you are, what are you doing in there? You know what I mean? Um, you know, everybody different. Some motherfuckers in there on bump restriction. Some motherfuckers getting their food took, starving, watching niggas boxers and all that. Some niggas having it their way. Some people minding their business, playing Dungeons and Dragons, Dominoes, watching ESPN. I think it's all about your experience. You know what I mean? What's What's the craziest thing you ever seen in prison? Oh, that's the uh, craziest <laughs> thing. And it's, it's 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 a couple different things, man. That shit is another world. That's why if you ever hear a motherfucker that was locked up, I don't know what people speak everywhere. I know I was locked up. I was locked up in Texas. You know what I mean? If you hear somebody in Texas speaking about out here, it's called the world. That's what they're going to call it, the world, the free the free world. You know what I'm saying? Because that's another world in there. You know what I mean? And so a lot of the stuff, like I can say that it's crazy, but in prison it's not crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's normal. Like motherfuckers doing gay shit, fucking with pokes. You know what I'm saying? That's something that motherfuckers really don't be talking about, but there's be a lot of people down there participating in them type of activities that, and I'm not talking about the feminine, weak motherfuckers that people look at and be like, oh, nah, nah, nah. It's dudes down there that's knocking niggas out, <laughs> holding hands, and, and fucking with punks too, you know what I'm saying? It's one of them things where you just mind your business. That's all, it's, it's another world because out here, you know, a motherfucker gonna whisper about it and say, how oh, he doing this, he doing that. I'm, hey, I'm not condoning it, but it ain't my business either. You know what I'm saying? So, crazy shit I done seen, man. I done seen that type of shit going on. I done seen, uh, I done seen a riot where it was like 70, it's 84 men in this tank. So, it was five of them. Versus 79, I've seen five people get smashed by 79 people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Talking about the Five the versus COs? 79. No, 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 no. Race, race. Oh, okay. A race situation. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it was Mexicans and blacks. You know, usually Mexicans and blacks, we can be at odds at different points in times in jail, but this time it was the Mexicans and the blacks clicked up together to smash the white boys. And there was only five white boys in a tank of 84 people. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's crazy. That, that, that was crazy. Motherfucker got life flighted. Man, man, that's crazy. So what what do you, what started that race riot? Man, honestly, I'm gonna keep it a book. I don't even know. Because yeah. in prison shit happened so fast. Only yeah. thing you know is once you see everybody strapping up their shoes, strap up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We was waiting for child. Uh a, a Hispanic dude went to the door of the next wing, hollered at his homeboy. He ran back downstairs, started strapping his shoes up. So we st everybody started strapping their shoes up like, shit, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, a black dude, he go up there. They, the word is, oh, it's the white boys. Whoop, they did something like st kick the fan or unplug the fan or something. So they smashed the white boys in that wing. Where our prison is, it's like shit travels. And so like it might not even be nothing personal going on with, with you. But... The people that you affiliated with, whether it's some gang shit or some racial shit, is popping off with them somewhere else. And so it's somebody close, it's close Yeah, somebody in your wing is gonna decide are y'all gonna participate in there or y'all gonna keep it where it's at. Sometimes you can just be like, oh no, that's them over there, fuck it. And sometimes you can't. And that was one of them situations where everybody was like, fuck it, we finna smash them too. You know what I'm saying? Even and that was it was just it was bad for them. Yeah. That's crazy, man. That's crazy.